Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. I have an antique booth called Green Onion Vintage and I'm always looking for things that I can upcycle and sell in my booth, hopefully for a good profit. So I recently picked up these pumpkins. These are the cheaper ones. So this is from Dollar Tree and these are from Hobby Lobby. They look like they're paper mache. I have painted a couple of these on my channel already and they sold right away. So I wanted to repaint these and see exactly how expensive I could make these look. Kind of challenge myself that way. And I'm gonna do a few different painting techniques and share them with you so that maybe you can do these crafts at home as well. So let's just jump right in and get started. For this first pumpkin, I am trying a painting technique to try to get this pumpkin to look like leather. And to accomplish that, I am starting with like an orangish base. I'm using the rusty nail color from Dixie Belle. And then that orange bottle I just showed you is the pumpkin color from Waverly that's at Walmart. And then I also put in some of the light yellow from Dixie Belle also um, to come up with this orange. And then I went over it again with the rusty nail red from Dixie Belle. And that kind of gave me like my starting color for this pumpkin. And then I went over it with the antiquing glaze also from Walmart. I wish I had the Dixie Belle brown wax, but I just couldn't find it today. And this technique really added a ton of character. I wish you could see yourself just sitting there on my chair. I feel like I was able to achieve a decent leather texture on this pumpkin. I do think that the clear wax and then the brown best staying wax from Dixie Belle would have given me a better like velvety texture. The antiquing glaze did a good job of adding some dimension, but uh, it's just not as rich of a texture. So I will go over this probably with the clear wax and see how that does, but I wanted to move on uh, for the purposes of this video and glue some leaves on top. And then that's gonna be probably the finished look for this one. I think it came out really pretty. I got these faux leather leaves from Hobby Lobby. It comes in this color and then this color. They look really similar on camera, but this one's more of a brown. And they don't look great on the pumpkin, and they look really fake in real life. So I actually just rubbed some black paint and just like very lightly applied the black paint to this leaf. I mean, you can tell it's like almost not there at all. So here's the one with the black paint rubbed on and then wiped back off, and here is the original. So I'm gonna have this one and then the brown color that I also did the black paint on and I'm going to kind of just build some leaves onto my pumpkin just for some fine, final embellishment and then this one will be all done. For this Hobby Lobby pumpkin, I have like a plaid idea in my mind. I'm gonna be using a mixture of Dixie Belle colors, um, starting with a drop cloth base color, which is kind of an off-white I use a lot on my channel. Um, and then I'm gonna alternate the Spanish moss color from Dixie Belle, which is kind of like a really soft greenish gray. And then the sandbar color, which is more like a tan, like a really soft tan. And then for my overlapping squares, which if you've seen me do like a gingham pattern before, you've, you've seen me do something similar to this. So wherever my stripes cross, I'm going to put a little square of green, but I'm not going to use the evergreen color straight up because it's pretty intense. I'm going to mix this with some of the Spanish moss so that it looks a little bit more similar as far as the color palette goes. And this is, that's gonna be my darkest square color. Um, and that's pretty much my plan for this. And it'll be a cute little gingham pumpkin when I'm done.
my next Hobby Lobby pumpkin, I'm going to be doing a candy corn colored pumpkin, but I'm going to give it like an ombre effect. So nice and simple. I use a spray bottle eventually to help me blend my paint colors together, but I'm basically just doing the white on top, the orange in the middle, and I'm using that pumpkin color from Waverly again for the middle section. And then I'm using the kernel mustard from Dixie Belle on the bottom section. And I'm just going to work the paint kind of back and forth and give it like a really nice blended effect. I know it's really hard to see in this lighting in my kitchen right now, but later when I give you the final reveal, you can see that there's actually a good gradient of color. And I thought this one came out really fun in the end. And for my last Hobby Lobby pumpkin, I actually shared this transformation in my Cricut video a couple weeks ago, um, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail here. So I paint this pumpkin the Muscadine Wine color from Dixie Belle. This is my absolute favorite color for fall, aside from olive green. I love wearing green and then this kind of dark wine color in the fall. It is my favorite. So I loved using this on the pumpkin, and I hadn't used this color before, but it was really, really beautiful. And I'm kind of itching to do a piece of furniture in it now. Um, once I have that paint nice and dry, I go over just kind of the crevices with the Dixie Belle Best Stain Wax in the black. And that just gives some added dimension and makes it look even more hand painted than it already is. Um, so I go in there with a fine brush and then I wipe out the excess with just a paper towel I think I use this time. And then I use my Cricut Maker 3 to write the word fall on some felt and then I'm able to cut it out from there. And I did kind of a white background and then a mustard yellow felt color for the word fall. It was so simple to do with my Cricut Maker. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link that down below so you can go see how the maker was able to do these felt letters for me. I just hot glued them right onto this pumpkin. Um, and like I said in my other video, this gave me like all these varsity, you know, your varsity coat feelings, kind of vintagey. Um, so I really like how this one turned out. It was pretty fun for me. And this was kind of a new thing for me to do using my maker. I've never done like the outline before and I've never used it to cut felt. Um, so this was a fun project and I just glued that right on there. And then like I have been doing with the other pumpkins, I add some leaves on top. And this one is just kind of a different take on the pumpkins that, from the other ones. And I think it turned out great. Just using the kernel mustard chalk paint to paint over that leather leaf that I was feeling like looked a little fake and this just helped highlight the mustard color of the felt on the pumpkin and I thought that was a good addition too. Okay, now moving on to these Dollar Tree pumpkins. These are just maybe the cheapest foam pumpkins you could ever find. I wanna give them all a similar looking treatment of like a black paint with a really like spooky antique vibe. I'm gonna be using the Iron Orchid air dry clay and some of their stamps and molds to create three different designs. I'm gonna use the Dixie Belle caviar paint for the base color. I'm gonna use one of the crockery stamps to make a little um, embellishment for one of the pumpkins. One of them, I'm gonna use the Iron Orchid mold in this Harper collection, so it's kinda like a typewriter font. I think I'm just gonna write the word boo on there in the clay and then glue that on with my Gorilla, Gla <laughs> Gorilla, Glen. Gorilla Gun glue stick. This is a really, really great glue stick because it doesn't, uh, like string the hot glue around everywhere. So this is one of my favorite tools. And then the third pumpkin, I'm gonna use the bird mold. Cause I think you can make a bird look kind of spooky for Halloween. Um, probably one of these guys, or maybe this one. I'm trying to decide like based on the size. So yeah, I'm gonna get started on these. You guys can kind of watch the process as I go along. And I think they'll be really cute in the end.
was really surprised at how well this trick worked. I actually created a stick for the bird to kind of be sitting on just by using a hot glue gun and I just drew the stick on there. I went over it a couple times so it was nice and thick and then once I paint over it you can't even tell that I made it out of hot glue and it looks really nice. For my second coat of black paint, I add baking soda. This is a good way to texturize your paint and also makes it thicker. And I use this so that it will kind of cover up the texture of that really cheap styrofoam of the pumpkin. And it, this actually did end up working really well. It filled in all the crevices and even covered up some of the cracks because you can tell how cheap it is. I mean, it is from Dollar Tree after all. Um, so this is a really good trick if you also have something that needs covered up really well with the paint. Baking soda goes a long way, and I just do about a 50-50 mixture of paint and baking soda. Originally, I thought I would make my molding stand out by using the drop cloth chalk paint color. I thought that would give a nice antique vibe, but then it was just going on really sloppy and it was filling up my stencil so much that I was losing a lot of the detail. So I actually end up going back through and wet distressing all of the clay details just with a baby wipe. And that did a really good job of removing the black paint. It helped some of the details come back through because they got a little clogged up from using the baking soda and the paint. And it smeared the black paint around and gave them like a really nice kind of spooky effect. So that was something that I wasn't planning on doing. But you can see here how cool it kind of makes the details pop out. But it also doesn't make it completely bright white again. So it looks nice and antiqued and like I meant to do it that way. So I decided to swap out the stems for an actual stick. I just went out in the yard and found something about the right size and I am just hot gluing them in place and then painting the hot glue black so you can't really see it. And this really cracked me up when I pulled, oh no, the stems out. They're actually just attached with the toothpick, which I mean, I don't know what I expected a Dollar Tree pumpkin to be built out of, but maybe toothpicks wasn't my first guess. So. Oh well, I'm taking it out anyway. I'm just kind of shoving this through. These are actually hollow inside. Just kind of shoving this stick through. I'll go put a little bead of glue around there, let it dry really well, and paint it black.
I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be having similarly styled projects coming up soon for the Christmas season. Really looking forward to that and sharing my antique booth with you as we get closer to the holidays. Thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next video. Bye!